for the sound. Okay, there we go. We got sound. Okay, thank you for telling me about that. I didn't notice. Okay, always like there's always something. I mean, I'm I'm actually prepared for this, but then at the last minute, something is always happening. Okay, let me repeat what I said, and I'm going to cut this out during the the actual replay uh, later on. So the the first thirty minutes is on the given topic, which is on why VPNs are blocked. And then after that, we go to a Q&A section and you can ask whatever you want. And if you don't want to stay through that, you can leave. But we're going to talk about the given topic only in the first 30 minutes. Okay, so it looks like we're good here. And uh, let me just uh, make sure I see the comments on YouTube because I don't see it yet. Hold on a second. Okay, now, now we're live. Okay, good. Okay. Wow. Always a delay. Okay, that's the thing about live stream. You know, I've been doing a live stream for for many, many years. And, you know, live streaming is kind of a risky proposition because you don't know what's going to happen until it happens. So, okay, good. Now, the, the topic tonight is something that many people asked. This is on BraxMe. Many people were asking specifically about um, why a Byte's VPN, my VPN, was being blocked. And it was very specific. There were some comments because I'm not blocked. I don't. I don't go anywhere that I'm blocked. That I'm using Bytes VPN daily, and um, and I'm wondering why you know why people were making a comment about of why it was blocked. As it turns out, the uh, the people who were making a comment were being blocked in one specific area, and that was in London. So London was. Uh, uh, the London region was being blocked by somebody. And they were like all trying to come up with some explanation of why Bytes VPN would be blocked there, but Proton VPN is not blocked, and, and on and on, just kind of, kind of question and answer, and, uh, and theorizing about why, and, and, you know, everyone trying to come up with some complex analysis of what's going on. And uh, it's not really... It's not really that complex, and, and, and in fact, it's not something I can really react to. And, and we're going to go through this in, on, on several angles here, but the main angle is, uh, first, to answer uh, how does one block a VPN? Uh, London server. London server. So people who were using the London server uh using the london vpn of bytes vpn my server were being blocked for some particular websites so again it's not clear what websites there were they didn't state so they're making a statement about about being blocked somewhere but i don't know specifically what they were being blocked from and somebody was making a comparison that they were not being blocked on Proton VPN, and they were being blocked in Bytes VPN. Therefore, Bytes VPN must be flawed in some way. And if you go through this kind of analysis, you'll be wasting your time, and you will be making the wrong analysis constantly, uh, because there is no particular reason for any particular VPN to stand out. It, it's not that simple. So let me just explain to make sure that you understand how to block a VPN. Now, I'm, I run a website. I run, of course, my own platform, BraxMe. I run many platforms, BraxMe, BytesVPN.com, and, and so on. And all of these websites, which I control, I can block anyone I want. I can block anyone I want. I can block any VPN I want if... And this is the question is, how do you find out they're on a VPN? I can block anything. I can block Tor. Uh, I can, uh, get, you know, given enough programming skills, which I have, I can block Tor. I can block LokiNet. So, you know, depending on the, your programming skills, the programmer can block anything they want. Okay? So, if anyone can block any kind of... Uh, location uh, that you're coming from, 
the question is how they do that. Let's ask that question first, and then we'll go into the next question is the why and and then the justification for them doing this. And you need to understand this because uh, uh, it is very bothersome in, 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 you know, when you really think about this. Okay, so how does a, a VPN get blocked? Now understand this. There is no global organization that says we've identified every VPN and therefore here's a list and there's, this is the ones you can block. Well, maybe somebody came up with that in a minor way, but in general, no one has... No one is maintaining a list of every single VPN. I mean, you can, you can, uh, it's a big maintenance issue because there's so many VPNs nowadays. So you, you could uh, get reports of VPNs uh, from a third party site and then, and then put it somewhere and say, okay, we're going to create a blacklist and then third party websites can use this as a basis for blocking a VPN. It's not very useful because you know like somebody like me i'm i run a vpn service and i can change ip addresses daily i can change isps anytime i want i can do anything i want basically to hide myself and uh, whatever anybody does to block me if i have enough patience i can say zuck you i'm gonna come up with a way to get around you uh and uh and uh, wipe you out and get around you in some way. So, how does it actually happen? Well, in order to block a VPN, there's a couple of ways. Couple of ways you can do it, or three ways to do it. One way is a very hard way, which is to note the IP addresses of every VPN in existence and record the IP ranges of anything with a VPN. That's pretty hard. That's almost impossible. That's almost impossible. How do, how do you do that? Uh, with the number of VPNs, I mean, there's obviously many, many thousands of servers. Uh, who's going to maintain this list for every single server? So you can only get like, you know, uh, a few. And how do you even know they're in a VPN? Well, I'll tell you how you can know in some ways, but it's not precise. And it's very hard to do. Well, so the way that any website can block anyone is by via a a IP address. Now, the reason some websites block certain IP addresses is because they've been attacked by some range of IP addresses. So, if I run a website and I'm always getting attacked by some troll that's coming from a certain IP address and I know this person is using a VPN, uh, or maybe I don't know that, but I just want to block that address, then I'm going to block that IP address. And I, I do that. My, my, uh, my app backs me as the capability to, to block anyone uh, based on IP address. And if so, it is possible I may be blocking accidentally, not, not intentionally, be blocking some VPN. Because if the user is using a VPN and it's a troll or somebody spamming or, or scamming or attacking my servers and I block that IP address, I could... Uh, uh, be blocking an entire block of people. I wouldn't know that. I'm just blocking an IP address. This is very easy to do. For me, it's one click. If I say, I don't like this guy, and you know, I have this very famous UK troll, <clears throat> this kid that's always attacking, and I got him fingerprinted to Gazoo, and I, you know, I even know where he lives. And, uh, you know, I block him and, you know, he, he got sophisticated. He's using VPNs now. So he's like, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm using onion routing now. Block that. Oh, uh, he's using a VPN. So maybe he's using, you know, some European, some EU VPN, I think. And um, so I block that. And invariably, I will have a chance of blocking the entire VPN because I blocked that IP address. He may not be the only user in that IP address. I could be blocking a whole bunch of people. So my point is, don't go around blaming uh, the VPN company and saying, well, you know, this VPN is blocked and it's just such a stupid VPN and whatever. For example, in that case, it's on the website. Each website has the capability to block any IP address they want because there's some bad player, you know, found in there. And in my case, there is. There's a troll, and I block it, and I may be blocking more than just one person. I don't know, but I want to get rid of this person, so I block 
that IP address, which could be a VPN server. It's all possible. I don't know. And you know what? I don't want to be disrupted. So uh, as a typical website owner, I'm going to say, I, I don't have time for this nonsense. I'm just going to block it. Not going to worry about it. Now, somebody's using uh, that web server, maybe coming to, uh, you know, from the EU and coming into Braxme and say, I'm being blocked by Bytes VPN. And, and then they're going to say, I mean, by uh, Braxme. And uh, th they'll blame me and say, hey, this guy is blocking my my site well it i may not be i just may be blocking an individual and he's using a vpn and so i blocked the server by accident so and i don't have time to distinguish between a, between a vpn and non-vpn i just block an ip address so that happens often so th the reason i say this as many of you panic and say that there's some flaw uh you know, because you get blocked and you don't know why. And the answer is just change region, change server, change something, and then you won't be blocked because obviously that IP address got blocked for some reason. Um, and we, as a VPN, can change the IP address of any VPN. We could do that now that I've been alerted to London having this problem. Maybe I change the IP address of London. Maybe that clears up. Maybe, maybe not. But that's on the blocking at the IP level. Now let's go to the next step. The next way to block some sort of VPN or at least what appears to be a VPN uh, is to understand how when you go to any website, the website can do something that I do. I do this, so this is not a mystery. I go and do a reverse IP lookup. So if you're coming in with a certain IP address, I'm going to do a reverse IP lookup and say, uh, what domain are you coming from? Okay, and, uh, and that may indicate something to me. Now, apparently some companies, the notable one over the years is Netflix. Netflix has uh, blocked certain IP addresses uh, for two reasons, and, and one, is, uh, one is based on a query of the geolocation of the IP address. Now, that's not accurate, but it's one way to do it. So Netflix will, will query and say, what is your IP address and your IP address x.x.x.x .x .x .x, uh, is owned by an ISP in London, and you're trying to watch movies on Netflix USA, Netflix will then say, we're going to block you because your IP address range is owned by somebody in London. Therefore, we're going to assume you're in London and block you. <coughs> now, now, uh, it, does that mean anything? Is it accurate? Not necessarily. And here's why and give you an example here. Uh, there are companies that buy up this IP addresses and lease them because they can make money off them. And one of the ones that I know about is that some Arab country, uh, forget, uh, is it uh, uh, UAE or one of those countries uh, decided that they're going to buy up uh, IP addresses or lease them and then release them back to somebody in the USA. So they show up as owned by somebody in, I'm just using an example here, I don't know which Middle Eastern country because I forget, but let's say it's UAE and so the IP addresses uh, are registered and they show up in the reverse IP lookup as being owned by somebody in the UAE. Therefore, they assume somebody, you know, trying to screen IP addresses will assume that you're in the UAE just because it's owned by them because that's how it's classified, even though, as it turns out, in my case, the, uh, the IP addresses were actually in Missouri. Okay, meaning the ISP were... Uh, ISP in Missouri did not have enough IP addresses and were renting some from somebody else and they happened to have rented it from 
from uh, Missouri, uh, from uh, some some company, and the company that owns the IP addresses were in were in the UAE. Therefore, the IP addresses were registered as UAE. Therefore, they were showing as UAE, and they were being rejected uh, by uh, Netflix or one of those because they say, "Hey, you're not in the U.S." So that's one of the flaws in the system because it's not really an accurate representation of where the the uh, IP address is. But this is all they have to do. Now, companies like Netflix, the reason they, they have to block uh, uh, IP addresses by location is by contract. And they have to do a best effort way of finding uh, where your IP address is so that they can then say, we're going to implement geofencing, meaning uh, only U.S. Uh, uh, people can watch uh, movies on Amazon.com Prime Video because that's what our license is for. And it's a licensing contract, and I see that on Netflix, and they don't want anybody else watching from us because they're bound by contract. I get that. I get that. So, so I mean, it's a fair problem they have. Uh, it's kind of stupid that they try to maintain it in this way, but that, that's... That's the limitation they have. I get that part. So that's one of the reasons like a Netflix is going to ban you. Now, what they what Netflix did was kind of extreme. They, they went beyond just saying we're going to ban you based on IP addresses. They said we're going to ban you uh, uh, because they didn't know how to handle it. So they went in an extreme way at some point. This was a few years ago. What they did is say if you're not on Charter, Spectrum, uh, Verizon, T-Mobile, one of those you know local carriers, then we're going to assume you're not residential. So they ba basically blocked every ISP that's non-residential. Every single ISP that's non-residential. So if you're an ISP and you don't have one of these common names that are DSL related, they block you. Or if you're not on a cell phone carrier, T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, they block you. Because those are the only three in the U.S. So, uh, uh, and U.S. U, uh, U.S. Uh, U.S. Mobile. Uh, so, uh, so basically, the three big ones: uh, uh, T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon, and uh, and a little bit of U.S. Mobile. So, so uh, if you're not one of those, and one of the home suppliers like Charter, Spectrum, uh, you know that kind of thing, then we're going to knock you out. Now, the problem with that and Netflix actually did, did this, is that they said, we, if you're not on a residential system, we're going to block you from watching Netflix, which means if you're on a corporate server, which goes to an ISP that's corporate, then you're zocked. So if you're running servers on, uh, on some other you know, ISP like AWS or Linode or GoDaddy, you are zocked. You can't go run Netflix. And that's pretty extreme, but they did that. Now, they have taken that out. Now you don't have, I don't have this problem uh, with Netflix. I'm watching Bytes VPN on Netflix. No issues whatsoever today. But at some point in the past, it was touch and go, like two years ago. It was like, you never know. One week they, they accept the IP, the rest, the, the other time they don't. And you don't know why and because they're playing these kinds of games. So how they do this is reverse lookup. So when you uh, have an IP address, they can say what domain is in the IP address. In my case, uh, my Bice VPN will often come up with a domain Linode.com because Linode uh, is my main ISP. And I have I may have other domains that are not Linode, but most of them are Linode. So that, then they can say we don't like Linode and we're going to block anyone coming from Linode.com. I you know they can do that. They have not done it, uh, at least in the U.S. and with Netflix. They have not done it. I mean, not today. They did it in the past. But recently, recently I have not had any issues uh, uh, except for a few limited cases, which I'll talk about. So I have not had that problem. So Netflix probably gave up and said, well, you know, whatever our way is too draconian and we're losing customers because we're being too aggressive with this and it doesn't really reflect the location of the uh, uh, user. So they're using primarily just, you know, where the IP is. And if it's a US IP, they're okay with it. They let you in. And the IP is registered to to uh, the EU or someplace else, and they can block you. So that's the general way they're doing it now. It's not perfect, like I said, 
but that's uh, basically what they're doing. They seem to not be blocking things based on uh, VPNs anymore, which would suggest that if you use a VPN and you're in, you know, you're in a boat in the Caribbean and you want to watch US uh, Amazon.com, then you can do it on Bytes VPN. You can't today. So, yeah, so that's working today. And uh, is that a problem? Uh, maybe they realize it's, you know, it's not worth the energy of trying to do all this and they stopped doing that. So, my point is that, yeah, they tried doing this and uh, uh, lately I haven't found that issue. Uh, and roughly because more people are using VPNs. I mean, the, the number of people using VPNs is much higher now than it ever was. So because of that, they may lose business if they start blocking VPNs and get, and get VPNs uh, and then get people irritated. So my point is that it's up to you to say it's okay for some site to block a VPN. I mean, you're the customer and you're allowing them to block you. And I, I complained. A, a UPS blocked me once. I always use a VPN. That's 100% of the time. The only uh, recent event that I was blocked on a VPN was on ChatGPT. And my solution is, I'm going to use Starlink. Starlink got accepted. ChatGPT blocked a VPN. Don't know why they did that. Pretty irritating, but we really need to think about this and say, why the suck do you block a VPN? What is the point of you blocking a VPN website? What is the point? Obviously, the reason we use a VPN is one of we we want to preserve our privacy. And we accept and we say, oh, oh, our VPN is being blocked. Let's complain to Bytes VPN. Let's complain to Bytes VPN. I mean, they're they're the problem. No. It's time for you to complain. I complained to UPS. I said, why the Zuck are you blocking me from using UPS just because I'm using a VPN? And I am using a VPN. And you know what UPS did? The gate made an exception and they unblocked me. Because Zuck you. I mean, I'm concerned about my privacy. Why do you need to block me? I admit that I'm using a VPN. I don't want you to record my IP address. I want to fight that. And many of you just accept it. So there are companies that block VPN, Sephora, AT&T, Zuck you mother Zuckers. I mean, even Google and Amazon don't block VPNs. What the Zuck are you doing? You Zucking websites? It's some Zucking programmer who thinks he's such a genius. And he said, I'm going to block these domains and whatever uh, for our safety is Zuck you. I mean, you're a customer. You're the customer. You decide you Zucking complaint to the website. A VPN blocking is a website level transaction. If a website is blocking you, blocking a VPN, you, you log into that website, say, Zuck you mother Zucker. Why are you sucking blocking a VPN? What am I doing to you that I deserve to be blocked when all I'm trying to do is maintain my sucking privacy? Why do you accept it? Don't accept it. Do not accept it. Why is AT&T blocking VPNs? I don't know if they still do, but they were. I made a list, you know, even Bank of America for some moment block VPNs. They don't now. They don't now. I, I, I don't have any problem with Bank America of America today. But they did have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with a VPN on PayPal, on Amazon, on Google, on anything else, Microsoft. No one's blocking me. But I'm being blocked on Sephora. Well, I don't use Sephora, but I tried it. Somebody reported to me and I tried it. Yes, it's blocking. So the question is, you need to complain and say to them, Zuck you, mother Zuckers, do not block us for trying to protect our sucking privacy. That's all we're trying to do, protect our privacy. You have no right to block us 
from Zucking protecting our privacy. By the way, blocking a VPN is useless. If you wanna if you wanna have some privacy, all you have to do is go use your cell data or Starlink. It's like a VPN anyway. So whatever they're trying to protect you from, uh, they're, they're wasting the energy. There's because there's so many ways around it. There's low key net. Uh, you know, yeah, they're gonna block Tor. Tor tends to attract you know hackers and such. So excluding Tor, you get all these options ready that can block the VPNs anyway. Uh, anything with IPv6 like cell data and Starlink will in insulate your your uh, IP address from your home because you're not gonna use that. So and yet they uh, they uh, some programmer uh, some dummy that needs to watch my videos is like oh I, I'm so smart I'm such a smart programmer I'm gonna be blocking these VPNs you know what you need to complain to management because it could be that some zucking programmer is just deciding on his own or maybe some middle manager is deciding on his own to block VPNs and he doesn't have the authority of the person from the top to say, well, you're willing to lose business and have bad press from people because you're blocking VPNs and all we're trying to do is protect our privacy. So suck them. Okay, so don't complain about the VPN saying, well, the VPN, this VPN protects, uh, is being blocked. And yeah, let me tell you something. Bytes VPN is is the least one of the least likely to be blocked because we don't register the VPN. We don't have that many users that they can spot that many users on the same IP address. So <clears throat> because we don't have the kind of numbers, Bytes VPN is not automatically known as a VPN. Google knows who the VPNs are because they can count how many people have the same IP address going to Google. Google can see the world, can see everything. Apple, uh, any of the big sites, Microsoft, Yahoo, they, ha Amazon especially, they can see who's coming from a VPN because they can see uh, a big chunk of the internet. Uh, small players they can't see. And that's one of the advantages of Byte's VPN. It's a small, as a small player, we're, we're not that visible. But even then, in spite of all that, some of you come around and say, because you're not perfect, you're, you're still being blocked by somebody. Well, I can't win because it's website by website. It's a website thing. Any programmer can choose to block you, just like I blocked somebody uh, from the UK because he's a troll. And I may have blocked an entire server, a VPN server. I don't know. It's possible I may have blocked. Uh, by VPN, there's no logs. What are you talking about? I use Vice VPN. Do I need to be logged? Obviously not. Okay, I mean, you know, if if I'm using it, I certainly don't want to be logged. So no, there are no logs. Absolutely none. So anyway, I'm just trying to tell you that we need to fight back. We can't accept this. We need to uh, uh, let them know that our use of a VPN is not because we're trying to be uh, to be you know doing something uh, bad. There's nothing nefarious in this. We just want to keep our privacy. And you tell them that. Why are you blocking VPNs? We just want our privacy. Thank you, my friends. And we're going to go into the next segment now. And we're going to take a sponsor break. And the sponsor happens to be, believe it or not, Linode. Well, I, I just told you that a lot of my servers are on Linode. Linode is probably uh, uh, my biggest... Uh, ISP. So I, you know, I have uh, many of my servers on Linode and um, especially my VPN servers. And um, <clears throat> there's a reason I go to Linode and one of them is that uh, they, are, they offer such great service and uh, consistently great service over, I mean, to, I mean I, we talk to them, uh, we talk to them easily every other day at least. There's some tech support activity going on with Linode almost every other day. And uh, such such uh, a great company that uh, supports me. I mean, I, I get a lot of abuse because people who use a VPN may do illegal things and be downloading illegal content. And I have to get, I gotta deal with ISP with things like that. And when, when somebody is supporting you and not, not accusing you of, you know, of 
tolerating uh, illegal downloads and, and all sorts of illegal activity, but supporting you as Linode does. You have to appreciate it, and I, I really do, because uh, Linode is an example of a company that uh, tries to come up with a solution to, to, uh, to solve it instead of just whining and saying, we're going to cut you off. Uh, because you got people doing illegal activities. So they're, they're always working with us and uh, and just uh, so pleased with that. Plus the fact that they are so reasonable in price. So if you want a good provider of, of uh, cloud services for your Linux server, for your website, and you're thinking, where do I go? Where do I put this website? And you're thinking, should I put it on uh, AWS or should I put it on uh GoDaddy or some other ISP, uh, you want to save money and you want a good service, why don't you go to Linode? It's a better deal. Okay, so if you want to, uh, if you uh, sign up with Linode and want to test it out and you put the code slash Rob Braxman, they're going to give you a $100 credit which, can, which you can use over a period of two months. Okay, so I don't just you know, support Linode because uh, they're my sponsor. In fact, in fact, uh, it's the other way around. I used Linode first and uh, found out that they were offering such great services. And then uh, they've been my sponsor for for uh, uh, a while now. I, I forget, uh, over two years, I think, two and a half years maybe. And, uh, and been uh, having such a great relationship with them. They've been bought out by Akamai now, but nothing's changed, and they're still uh, treating me in a very wonderful manner, and I uh, want to promote a company that's doing a great job. So they're doing a great job. They're actually my only sponsor. I don't really take sponsors, but, you know, they're easy to deal with, and, uh, you know, they're a good company, so I support them. Anyway, <clears throat> so... Uh, <laughs> Can a VPN help protect from hackers? Actually, yes. Tommy M. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that, uh, well, it, uh, many people think they're, they're being hacked, but they're not being hacked. So it's it's really hard to, to react automatically to comments like that because I'm going to tell you that 90% of the people that come to me and tell me they're being hacked are not being hacked. They have some other fault in their network or something else going on and they don't understand what's going on so they're going to blame the unusual activity from things like incorrect setup and blame it on a hack and it's not even a hack. But yes, for example, if you go to, if you go to Starbucks and start using the network on Starbucks and say, I'm going to go to my bank and I'm, I'm going to go log into the website bankofamerica.com from Starbucks uh, is there a possibility that you can be hacked at Starbucks? The answer is Zuck, yes. Yes, now, you know, it's not simple. It's not simple step process. Uh, you know, maybe they have to see you a couple, a few times at, at uh, Starbucks and they establish a pattern that you're going to, to Bank of America and they can prepare for it. Or maybe they have prepped, prepped uh, their attack for people uh, going to Bank of America because you, uh, in a public website they can see what websites you're visiting so it is possible they can prep that attack for anyone at the uh, at the uh, bank of at Starbucks going to a particular bank like Bank of America the solution is a VPN and why is that because when you're in a VPN they cannot see that you're going to Bank of America that becomes invisible to the hacker all they see is encrypted traffic to the VPN. So a VPN protects you in an open network. So um, um, you cannot be attacked with open ports. Somebody can't attack your your connection uh, with open ports because you don't have an open port when you're connecting your entire traffic through a VPN. That's one part of the VPN protection. So you can't be attacked from the outside that way. Okay? Because you... You know, when you're on a VPN, it doesn't accept traffic from uh, outside of the VPN. Uh, that's just the way the VPNs work. So that's an automatic protection. But, you know, the, the basic reason you use a VPN is that it does not reveal your IP address, which is extremely important. Uh, unfortunately, when you have a home network, 
specifically a home network, uh, your DSL IP address is attached to you. It's fixed. My IP address in my home hasn't changed in 20 zucking years. Okay, I still have the same address. I still, I mean, I, I get, it's a dynamic IP address, but I might as well consider it static because it hasn't changed in 20 zucking years. Why it's called dynamic when it changes, it doesn't change. I mean, I can run a website on it because it doesn't change. I will not, I'll not do that. Because uh, that introduces dangers, but uh, but the fact is that the IP address when it doesn't change and it gets recorded to you and you do some things on the internet and it gets attached to you and they start to know your identity based on the IP address and there's a location attached to the IP address. Uh, talked in many videos how they can acquire the location based on the IP address and there's a database public databases which match the IP address to location so all they have to do a third party can sign up to that database and know where you are exactly within six feet just by knowing your IP address so it's very very dangerous for IP address to be known your IP address is transmitted in your email. Every email you send out includes your docking IP address. This is why uh, I talk about protecting that uh, by using an email that does not include that kind of metadata like, you know, Braxmail. Braxmail does not allow your IP address to show in your email. So if you do things like that to protect, you protect your IP address and obviously the best way to protect your IP address is with a VPN and you do not you do not need to protect your IP address uh, on email if you're using Braxmail because we do that also uh, on Braxmail automatically so but obviously it's important if I'm trying to you know obscure the obfuscate the the IP address both on email and anything else you do because it's used to track you, it used to do browser fingerprinting, it's used to track your activities. It's uh, matched to your location, matched to your Google ID, matched to any kind of ID. Facebook uses it to, to, uh, uh, to know who you are exactly. Uh, they know who you are exactly, but now they know where you live and who lives with you. Okay, so they say AI will break a VPN. No, an AI will not break a VPN, but the quantum computer can break a VPN. Should we change the VPN location often? Um, uh, I, not, not necessarily. Uh, does, I don't think it matters so much. Um, no. Uh, no, no, it's not, that's not essential. Uh, the, the problem is if you use a VPN location that's really far from where you really are, then the website may, may think you're a rogue uh, operator. So let's say you're uh, in the US and you're a bank and you're using a bank system and you're trying to withdraw money and you're using a VPN that says you're in the UK. Well, the bank will obviously start to worry. Well, wait a minute. You don't live in the UK. We have your address. We have your home address and you're showing that you're in the UK. Uh, that's problematic for the bank because, you know, obviously they're trying to protect your money because they're gonna be liable. So they're gonna do everything they can to protect your, they know your real address already. And uh, so the VPN, uh, if you're using a VPN with a bank and it's inconsistent where your real location is, then they'll worry. Now I haven't had a problem using a VPN in the same state. Uh, you know, uh, that doesn't seem to worry the bank, but when you go out of state, they may worry and then they may ask you for a lot of capture codes and all that because they start to not trust you. I don't think it's necessary to go that far. And the reason is that the only thing you're trying to do is make sure they don't get your home IP address uh, and match an exact location, meaning to an actual physical address within six zucking feet, which they can do if they have your actual IP address. Knowing that you're in the same state that you are, you know, 200 miles away doesn't really say anything. I mean, they can't identify you. So I wouldn't worry about it. You, you would be wasting your time too much. Uh, the, 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 the whole point of a VPN is that many people are using the same IP address, so they can't even match a location because there are several people. Uh, there are many people using the same uh, IP address, and therefore uh, they can't be certain what your location is. Uh, if there, Let's say there's a couple of hundred of you uh, with a known IP address of X, and X, uh, 
couple hundred of you are not is not going to reveal, uh, you know anything about about anyone. They're not going to know who who is what. They're not going to know your political beliefs. They're not going to know any of that. Uh, your exact address because out of a couple hundred people or a thousand people, they're not going to know that. That that data becomes invalid and they have to wipe it out. So anyway. Uh, so no, it's not it's not useful. All you're trying to do is hide the IP address. When I use Starlink, <clears throat> when I use Starlink, Starlink actually uses a uh, IPv4 router at the at the uh, ground station that Starlink uses. Uh, I don't know what they call that. You know, they they send their traffic to a ground station, and that ground station has an IPv4 router. So we all have the same IP address on Starlink. And it doesn't change very often because, you know, because based on where you are, you tend to use the same ground station. Uh, forget the name. They, they have a name for this on, on Starlink. I haven't really uh, researched the actual naming here. Uh, but it, uh, in, in the case of Starlink, the, the fact that they can't identify me, there are thousands of people on Starlink. So that they can't know who I am out of the thousand. Now, Starlink can. If somebody subpoenaed the records and say precisely who did this transaction at this exact moment, they, yeah, they can, they can find that. But that's not their concern because any typical website doesn't have access to that data. Only governments can access that. So for normal, legitimate, legal activity, you don't really have to worry about that. It's no real concern. And uh, no, your, your job is just to keep big tech from assigning an identity to what you do on the internet. And using a VPN is simple enough. You don't need to go, to go more complicated than that. Using Starlink is fine. Using cell data is fine too. Okay. So, uh, um, so the, anyway, uh, uh, comments like AI will break a VPN is kind of a, Meaningless. I don't know what that means. What, what does that mean? Break a VPN. What are you breaking exactly? Are you talking about encryption? So, just just so you understand this, so, so you 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 actually uh, mean you should have watched my last two videos. It's very low views on two important docking videos. If you actually understand everything I said in those two videos, you, you actually understand a lot of stuff. And it's it's uh, intermediate level, and it's uh, but it's very detailed. And if you understand that, you won't ask me questions like AI uh, breaking the VPN. If you understand this, you you won't ask me that question. Okay. So so exactly what happens? Your traffic to any website is HTTPS TLS encryption, transport level, transport. Uh, what is it? Um, um, transport levels <laughs> security. <laughs> I can't even remember what these acronyms mean now. Transport level security, TLS. So that's automatic within websites. So even if without a VPN, you talk to google.com, um, HTTPS, it's already encrypted. Okay, now what does an outsider see if you talk to, well, let's talk bankamerica.com because that was a, the case of the hacker. The, the hacker can see that you're talking to bankofamerica.com on HTTPS. They can see that, which is why they can attack you if they know you're going to Bank of America. That means, oh, we know what your bank is, it's Bank of America. Therefore, if you got spam mail or any kind of a, 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 a scam mail that includes Bank of America, you may think it's really for you because you have a Bank of America account. America account. Okay, so that's, that's uh, one case here. Now, let's put the, so that level, they can see Google, I mean, sorry, bankofamerica.com. That's it. That's all they can see. They cannot see what you're doing on bankofamerica.com because that's part of docking TLS encryption. They cannot see anything else. They can just see the domain bankofamerica.com. That's all they can see. Okay, now, let's change the scenario. You're on a VPN. When you're in a VPN, they cannot see that you're on bankofamerica.com. That is now encrypted twice. The second encryption is a VPN encryption. Is that the real Mr. Beast? 
can't imagine Mr. Beast would watch me. Somebody's taking Mr. Beast's name. Would that be amazing if Mr. Beast actually followed my channel? <laughs> how many million? How many? Uh, how many million followers do they have? I, I lost count. So anyway, uh, if you're on a VPN, it's a double encryption. It encrypts. Uh, TLS, which is already encrypted, encrypts it again, and in the process also encrypts the fact that you're talking on bankofamerica.com. So all they see is traffic between you and the VPN server. They don't know it's a VPN. They know it's a V. They they just know you're talking to some server. Uh, with deep packet inspection, they may guess it's a VPN. It can't be exactly certain because it's encrypted. But they will know, in my case, they will see that you're connected to Lenovo.com and you have a lot of traffic to Lenovo.com. That's all they can see. That is it. They don't know what websites you're visiting, nothing. That's what a VPN has as an advantage. They can't even see where you're going to if you are watching it as a hacker. Can't see nothing. Okay? You don't need VPN on Thor. You just choose one. That's a waste of time. <clears throat> okay? So, oh, no space in Mr. Beast. Oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody, <laughs> I don't really watch Mr. Beast, but uh, yeah, I don't watch Mr. Beast. <clears throat> Occasionally, you got to see, you got to see something because, you know, it's big on YouTube. So, you see something. But in any case, uh, yeah, because you're double encrypted, there is very little to see in the VPN. So that's kind of the advantage of a VPN. Now, um, somebody said, well, the VPN can spy on you. VPN can spy. This is kind of a stupid comment in a, in a way because I, I want to make sure you understand that. The VPN can see exactly only the domain name that is it somebody said do you log in modern times in the last few years maybe the last three years okay maybe up to five years the vpn doesn't see much other than the domain name and the reason is the standard uh, method of of traffic now on on uh, on the internet is https which means we cannot see actual traffic. We just see the negotiation for TLS. So that's just the domain name. So the only thing a VPN can see is the sucking domain name. That is it. You don't even have to be afraid of that because it's so limited. And this is because almost everything now is TLS, including your email to the server is TLS. TLS is the encryption method used. Where the problem is, it's not between you, the VPN, and let's say the email server you're talking to. For example, an email. The problem is between email server to email server. That is talking to each other using SMTP unencrypted. Text, plain text. This server to this server. So this email server to this email server or MTA to MTA is called uh, message transfer. What is it? MTA uh, message transfer. What is the A? I forget. MTA, whatever. Can't, can't remember every acronym on every day here. Uh, so an MTA talking to an MTA uh, is in plain text and it's not under your control because the servers communicate between themselves. That is a traffic that's intercepted by three letter agencies. That is nothing that would a VPN it occurs beyond you. You send your email to the server, the server talks to the other server, that's when it's seen. You don't have any control over that. <clears throat> that's the danger of email. Uh, your actual communications is encrypted. Uh, most everything today is encrypted. Most every communication between a client computer and a server is encrypted. So that's uh, not too much of a problem uh, with maybe the risk of, if you're a target person, maybe they can use a quantum computer to decrypt, uh, you know, like a government threat. But 
you'll have to be somebody extremely important for them to ex uh, use that kind of resource because it's not easy to do. So, mail transfer agent, thank you, robot Glock. That's exactly it. Mail transfer agent. Sorry, I just yeah. So anyway, so yeah, so uh, are VPN safe? Do you need to worry about? Are you logging the VPN? Uh, that used to be a worry. I I wouldn't be concerned about that now. That's not a concern. Uh, I I do have a VPN service, and I'm not even telling you to not use some other VPN service. Use whatever you want. Uh, I think we have some advantages with our VPN service, uh, but <clears throat> I I don't need to self promote here. So, because uh, that's not the point of this broadcast. You can find out, you know, there, there are things that we do that's a little bit different. You know, we do pie hole, uh, ad blocking, um, because we are not obviously a VPN, because there's not that large number of users. Uh, it's advantageous. We don't get blocked. We don't block email. Most VPNs block email, SMTP. Uh, which VPN service is top tier? bytesvpn.com which is our VPN okay so anyway just just so you know that it's uh, it's uh, it's a choice uh, if you want to use some other VPN you can uh, you can do that I, I don't have any uh, thing bad to say about any other VPN that's uh, that's not my job okay uh, I'm I'm you know if you want to support this channel also you know for for the, the, roughly the same price you you're supporting this channel by choosing our VPN besides you get personalized service so so yeah uh, now uh, there was some question there that I want to answer uh, I just want to tell you some other details uh, as you all know we have the uh, Brax 2 phone and I announced in uh, the last couple of live streams that uh, you know very soon sometime in the fall we're going to have a new phone model and the phone model uh, is going to be uh, kind of like an iPhone form factor it kind of looks like an iPhone in shape so it's very stylish and, and it really looks good <clears throat> And uh, that's going to be, um, uh, it's, it's a larger form factor, kind of like the current Brax 2. And it's going to be uh, available in the fall sometime. And I said, oh, because we have a new model, then we're going to uh, discount the current model uh, so that we can make room for the new model. Well, <laughs> the, the, the bad news is, the bad news is, as it turns out, <laughs> I'm going to be running out of Brax 2 phones. Uh, I'm going to be frank with you. I only have stock of Brax 2 phones till June. Uh, I doubt if I'll have any Brax 2 phones to sell international or USA. I may run out of international even before June. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't have much left. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, I still have Brax 2 USA left, but I don't think I'm going to have enough stock beyond June. Okay, so I just want to make this clear. So I cannot discount the phones when you don't have stock. So I'm, I'm not going to have a lot of stock of Brax 2. So if, you, uh, if you're interested in uh, Brax 2 USA, then uh, we have uh, stock until June. After that, uh, I probably have to uh, introduce a different model temporarily while we wait for the uh, Brax 2, Brax whatever, Brax 3 or whatever the model name is uh, for the fall. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll plan on stocking on Pixel uh, 6a probably. So we'll have a, you know, a temporary stock of, uh, of some other model. Uh, Pixel 6a likely which is quite a nice phone and for about the same price as a Brax 2 uh, around then and then uh, uh, you know maybe we can do pre-orders for for Brax 2 for 
for shipment in the fall. So yeah, so so um, unfortunately there'll be a gap in there. I was hoping that we would have uh, enough Brax two phones that we can just discount and then we can have a new model and old model at the same time. I don't have that. So yeah, uh, ran out, unexpectedly ran out. So does your Brax phones work in South Carolina? What uh, what is so unique about South Carolina? Is is that different from any other state in the in the United States? Uh, but no, don't use Cricut. No, if you want to use Cricut, use a Pixel. Uh, no, uh, I do have a few blacklisted uh, uh, carrier MVNOs that you should not use with Brax two phones. Uh, certainly, Verizon is not certain. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I do not recommend Verizon. Um, uh, although some MVNOs work, like Red Pocket and Verizon might work, but Verizon itself, problematic with texting. Uh, and then there are the ones that are spying on you that you should never go to, and those are Cricket and Ting. Do not ever go to Cricket and Ting. Cricket is just AT&T. Go to Pure Talk, uh, Red Pocket. There, there are many MVNOs of AT or go to AT&T itself. You do not have to use Cricket. Cricket is nonsense. So Cricket gives us a problem. Dump Cricket. Dump Ting. Do not use both of those. The rest are okay. Okay. And the reason is we don't, we uh, we spoof the IMEI on Brax2. They don't know what the IMEI is on a Brax2 because we don't use a real IMEI on it. Translation only use Cricket. This uh, robot clock. Are you uh, are you a troll robot clock? I, I worry about you. Some I haven't been reading your comments. Now I'll pay attention now. Is robot clock a troll? Does it have to get deleted? Just because there we go. This is saying nonsense there. Okay. Uh, I do have sound, so I, I don't know what you're saying. I, I can see sound being transmitted. Uh, QQQ, can you get any clue? It's VPN from Tracert. Rob, can you get any clue? It's a VPN from Tracert. You don't need Tracert. You need what is called reverse IP lookup to see what the domain is. Because a uh, VPN will, will use an ISP. So if it's not a home provider, then there's a possibility it could be uh, a VPN. But you don't know that for sure. That's right, great gold. No cricket, no zucking ting. Yes. Yeah, those are... Uh, I, I used to recommend ting all the time. Then they get bought out by another company and they started implementing these procedures where they, I, I still have an inactive account on Ting. I can't even log in. Like Zuckum. Uh, I understand, I, understand, I was worried you were in Japan or China and would work in USA. I, I'm not in Zucking China or Japan. Or what do you think I am, simulation? I'm in Zucking Los Angeles. <laughs> Goodness. Watch my sailing videos. I'm sailing in the sucking Los Angeles area, Santa Monica Bay. Yeah, so come on. <laughs> Playing music in Los Angeles. You can see my Rob Braxman jazz channel. You can be the, you see, you know, Rob's grid, off grid sailing channel. <laughs> I mean, I'm right here in LA. So, yeah. Start page are partners with Microsoft now, just like. DuckDuckGo. Still recommend them as a search engine now. Startpage are partners with with Microsoft. Uh, Startpage is a Google uh, proxy. Do, are they proxying with Bing? Anyway, the way Startpage works is a proxy. So yeah, they're they're an excellent solution. Uh, they basically take your identity out of the search. They could partner with they partner with Google right now. So you're saying they're partnering with Microsoft, which means you're saying they're partnering with Bing? That doesn't matter because they're just sending the traffic 
without your identity, it's it's fine. So uh, yeah, uh, uh, the problem with Brave search engine and DuckDuckGo is that they censor. I may be okay with you, but depending on your political side, you may not like that. L.A. might as well China. Uh, wow, you're are you like racist or what? You, you didn't say Mexico. <clears throat> How can I change the IMEI on any unlock? You cannot. You can change IMEI on Brax2 phones. If you have a Brax2 phone, you can change your IMEI all day. Unfortunately, I do not have my sailing uh, on. This is responding to uh, Rumble. Unfortunately, my sailing channel is not on Rumble. It's only on YouTube. Um, Duck Duck goes reports to Bing. Uh, well, that's not my problem. It's Duck Duck Go. Yeah, they do take uh, traffic from Bing. Uh, Duck Duck Go is censoring. I don't like any site that censors because they're trying to manipulate you. Don't like that. What distro you use? I'm using Pop OS right now. Uh, I'm right now the the machine I'm looking at here is Pop OS. So it's about the money when they compare LA to China. I I don't know what that means. So start by just using results from other engines. Yes, that's what they do. They're a proxy. They basically go to whatever engine, and usually they go to Google. I didn't know they went to Microsoft. I can ask them. I mean, I do talk to the people at Startpage itself. Uh, in the past, I've only gone to Google, but Bing now uses ChatGPT. Maybe Bing has better results. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Bing is now connected to ChatGPT, so maybe that's what they're looking at. So Startpage basically does the search for you. So it's a proxy, meaning they act like they're searching but actually you're searching and then they pass the results to you indirectly by doing that then google can't track you because they don't know who the person is doing the search so start, because of that uh you you get the best results because of course google has the most the biggest spy machine so they have they have google analytics they have the best search engine because they're in every website so google Unfortunately for us, has the best search engine and has the most data. So because of that, then uh, they have an advantage in search results. Uh, start page utilizes Google data, but does not identify you. So it's like the best of both worlds. Okay, uh, Natalie, how, it's, uh, uh, how, uh, how much are they? Uh, yeah, it's 420 currently for the remaining stock of Brax2, which is uh, going to last only till next month. So I only have supply for uh, of Brax2 till next month. After that, no more Brax2. And then I have to wait for the availability of the next model, which will be in the fall. So I'm kind of like stuck here. What if the start page proxy gets identified? How do you identify a start page proxy? It does, it's not you. The start page proxy is the server at start page. I think, uh, uh, trying to remember if their servers are in the Netherlands. I mean, there are start page employees here, right here in LA. Uh, but I don't, I think their servers are all over the place. Google censors, does it affect start page results? It cannot because it doesn't know the identity of the person. Google can only censor when they know the Google ID. In the case of a start page, because they're using uh, a generic ID, then they can't. I, I believe they have, uh, they pay uh, the search data in, a, in kind of a trunk. In, uh, uh, they're not like hiding from Google, so they pay Google for the search. And uh, they profit every time you click on an ad, uh, but it's like it's, I said, indirect. So that's the advantage of Startpage is is that it does have Google data, 
but without your identity. So it's like the best of both worlds. How do you rate? No, I do not rate other VPNs. Use Bytes VPN. Bytes VPN, which is in the description. Um, uh, yeah, somebody mentioned that Start Page has some new relationship with Microsoft. Never heard that. They haven't told me. Uh, I haven't talked to Start Page recently, but uh, maybe. Yeah, they could have a relationship with any uh, search engine, but originally they only had a relationship with Google. The, the, the main problem is that uh, DuckDuckGo is censoring the content based on politics. And um, uh, so let's say you're anti-vaccine, they would censor that. Uh, DuckDuckGo uh, has certain leanings. Uh, start page cannot censor that. Although Google might. Right. Start page does not require Chrome, but uh, uh, I don't know if the extension works on other browsers. I think I've used it on uh, an extension of several browsers. Uh, Brax phone, the next Brax phone will not use 5G. So no, the next Brax phone is still 4G. We're trying to avoid 5G as long as we can, which is, which is great. I, I, you know, there's no real 5G, by the way. 5G is the MM wave stuff, and that's really not yet in circulation. So what is touted as 5G is not really 5G. Some people come to me and say, well, I, I only want to buy a 5G phone. They don't even understand what that means. Okay, the current 5G is just multi-channel LTE. So it's LTE. So when somebody says, uh, does your phone uh, support 5G? All that means is it supports frequencies that do multi-channel. They're still LTE. So LTE is going to be around a very long time. In fact, it's being used by 5G. So the technology is not any different. Technology for uh, for 5G and uh, 4G is the same. It's just multi-channel 4G. Okay? So some people call it 4.5G. Correct. Some people will call it that. It's not real 5G. Uh, is, is 5G uh, an advantage to you? <laughs> for most of you, you will realize the answer is No. You're not getting any better signal with 5G. Most of you know that. Uh, most of you in the rural areas know that 5G doesn't work in rural areas. 5G is a, the multi-channel is made to work only in urban areas. So there really no, is no advantage. Somebody told me, oh, T-Mobile is going to stop supporting 4G phones. Nonsense. That's like saying, we're not going to support any rural area because rural areas are certainly not on 5G. Come on. Please. Okay, so the next level that they're, that originally I called 5G is probably going to be called 6G, which we're not there yet. Okay, so 5G is 5 gigahertz. That does nothing to do with 5G. Yes. It's completely different terminology. <clears throat> so yeah LTE is 4G so that's the same thing LTE 4G is the same terminology okay 5G is multi-channel LTE later on you will have real 5G which is MM wave millimeter millimeter wave okay my light my light just went here guess it ran out of battery probably won't last long so let me lower the light intensity. Uh, okay, sorry. Ran out of light power. Um, people are saying that Qualcomm mobile chipsets are sending user data back home, even running to Google ASP ROMs. Well, fortunately, our AOSP ROM is running MediaTek, not Qualcomm. So Brax2 is not using Qualcomm 
at all. Uh, can can uh, Qualcomm send mobile data somewhere? Yes, it can. Is there a backdoor to Qualcomm MediaTek? Possibly, yes. However, it's limited to telecom data, like calls, SMS, that kind of thing. It's not going to see the websites you're visiting. I'm writing a a course module about disassembly of devices for reuse. Hmm, interesting. Uh, way I understood is that we never achieved uh, 4G actually. No, we're not, we didn't achieve 5G. Uh, I don't know where you're getting that on 4G. 3 gigahertz bands are also 5G. Uh, no, 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 no. You're not true. 3 gigahertz. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Five. Multi-channel LTE means they're trying to free up frequencies to use multi-channel. And they need more channels to do multi-channel. So they, one of the frequencies they use is in the 3 gigahertz range, uh, which they claim to be part of 5G, which basically means more zucking LTE zucking channels. It's still zucking LTE. Nothing has changed. Just more channels. They do. They transmit to two channels at once, and you say, "Oh, it's faster," because they're using two channels at once. It doesn't matter what the frequency is. They use, you know, a anywhere from uh, uh, six gigahertz down. That that doesn't mean anything. Six gigahertz down includes. Uh, they're going to go lower. They're going to use. Uh, uh, T-Mobile just bought uh, one point. They just bought a ham frequency. In the past, uh, it said 1.6. I can't remember the actual frequency, but they bought that. What's that used for? Rural areas. So is that 5G? Zuck, no. They can call anything they want. You know, it's, it's the same technology, LTE, just in a different frequency. What's the advantage of 1.6 gigahertz? Well, it's longer range because the lower the frequency, the longer the range. Okay, so yeah, just be accurate. Okay, so now they're, it's not just three gigahertz. They're going to add one point, whatever it is. I, I'm guessing it's 1.6, but I can't remember right now. Yeah, my ham radio friend is telling me, oh, they just bought this frequency in an auction. So T-Mobile bought an auction. See, I got inside information on a lot of these. And, and yeah, so T-Mobile bought in an auction uh, one of the ham radio frequencies. And I believe it's one point something 1.6 maybe i i can't remember right now and the purpose of it is for long distance because you yeah uh, the lower the uh frequency the it the less it's uh, affected by obstructions and can go further especially if you're trying to get through a rural area is that going to make it faster hell no Okay, is is uh, is uh, one point? I mean, you should know this. One point six gigahertz isn't going to be any faster than two point four, or you know, uh, in fact, one of the lower frequencies. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, the original frequency used by T-Mobile was eight hundred, which they're still using for LTE. That's one of the channels. Eight hundred. So. Maybe it's not 1.6. It could be a lower frequency because they already own 800. T-Mobile did. So I, I may be wrong. I said I said 1.6. I don't know why I said that. It it's probably not 1.6. It's probably lower. Maybe it's 700. I don't know. It's a lower lower frequency than than what they have now. Uh, Neil, I uh, I just had the, the usual uh, pre live stream uh, adult beverages. In case you're wondering, yeah, uh, today is like margaritas because tomorrow is Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. It just sounded good. Yeah, I had margaritas. So, yeah, 900 meg was sold to, uh, 900 mega was sold to Verizon. Uh, T-Mobile was already using 900 or 800. I thought the Verizon already had 900. So it's it's something else. It's it's lower. Maybe it's seven hundred. I I can't. I don't remember at this moment. 
So the point is, there's some lower frequency than they usually got that they usually that, that they didn't use before that was not used for 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 cell traffic, and they they bought it. T-Mobile bought it. So it's funny. They're they're saying six hundred. Victor Debs researched it. That probably is it. I said 1.6, but maybe I just mentioned, I just remembered a 6. It is probably 600. Got to, got to be lower than 800. So Victor Debs says 600. I am, uh, I am likely to think it is 600. Uh, it was a long time ago. Uh, some months ago, a friend of mine uh, told me, because he worked in telecom, and he told me that T-Mobile bought some lower frequency that they weren't using before. And he told me what it was. It was used by ham radio before. And I believe you're right. It could be 600. The point is, they're saying, we're going to use 5G. And 5G is, you know, millimeter wave. And we're reversing. We're actually going down in frequency. So we're not going to this millimeter wave issue. We're not even there. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, we got uh, 11. How many minutes do I have? 11 minutes. Do you like pina coladas? Uh, yeah, sometimes. A little sweet. A little sweet. So you got to be in the mood to, uh, to like a pina colada, but uh, yeah, a little sweet. Um, you know, sometimes it's best to just have a single single malt from from Scotland right get a nice single malt and uh, I, I can't really drink much nowadays I I um, I have a limit to what I can drink so yeah single malt from Scotland uh, you know various kinds what antivirus do you use? None. None. First of all, I'm running Linux in one. What antivirus do I use on it? None. I have, uh, you know, other operating systems. I, I, I do use the default uh, Mac Windows Defender because it's already built in. Otherwise, I don't use anything. Uh, totally bombed? Hell no. I, I, why would I be bombed? What about a Starlink phone? Tommy M is in dreamland, my friend. You are in dreamland. No, uh, um, uh, Elon is not going to waste time with a Starlink phone. Elon is going to be making Teslas and SpaceX rockets. Not Actually, uh, Starlink is offering a cell service for remote areas, which will be... Um, uh, utilized by some phones with certain antennas because uh, it's it's kind of a low bandwidth thing it's allows it's kind of like a substitute for a satellite phone they will be offering that service but they're uh, I don't believe they're using any they're making their own phone uh, extended T-Mobile bands for 40, well the band the band numbers don't really tell you that some of these new bands are actually multi-channel bands. So when, when uh, T-Mobile, what do you think about starting an open BTS carrier? The problem, that's a very good point on common news. On common news, that is such an important point. Now I want to tell you something. I wish you could just say, let's do an open BTS carrier, which you know you think you can do. Zuck, no, you can't do it, my friend. Not in the USA. You have to spend billions to reserve the zucking frequency. What we should have is the government say, we're going to allocate a open channel uh, where anyone can operate a frequency like open BTS and have a public open source channel. Of course, they're not going to do that. So, because this is tax money. So, yeah, so these carriers pay billions to lease each frequency band. So, no, you're not, maybe you can set up an open BTS in, in your rural area that nobody knows about. 
you know, for your uh, little uh, prepper prepper community, uh, and you don't publicize it. Yeah, you can do that, but you cannot use an open frequency publicly without an FCC license that they auction for billions. So no, not gonna happen. They'll kill you for, oh yeah, they're gonna, yeah, they will kill you first, <laughs> no doubt. Will they throw multiple channels of 1.2, 1.2 megahertz? Uh, they, uh, the, uh, uh, depending on the channel, they, you know, it's it's a pretty wide channel. I'm I'm not sure what the the size of the channels in megahertz uh, for somebody because it depends on the channel. Is ham radio internet possible? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, we are not allowed to encrypt on ham radio internet. I already have a video on that. It's called uh, Arden, A-R-E-D-N. You can watch that video. It's an old video. Starlink isn't great. Yes, not for me. It's not. I do not get uh, uh, good, good traffic on it. However, they're offering now, Starlink is offering a uh, priority internet on Starlink. I haven't tried it. It's 250 bucks a month. So um, uh, I suppose I can try that and seeing if I can live stream on Starlink with the priority service of 250 bucks a month. Don't know. Is the Linux better than any other OS? Hell yes. Use Linux. Can you explain 10G from Xfinity? They can call anything any G. 100G. Anyone can say any kind of name. It doesn't have to have any any significance. Uh, did I answer your question on Common News? I, I don't even know. 6G. So anyway, uh, in theory, 6G is the millimeter way, but we don't even know if that's going to be the case. Um, there will be no Brax Zucking GPT, no. Uh, you know, I got to make more AI-related videos because it's really something to fear. <coughs> uh, in which thread? Your host will just tell you me to go somewhere else. So you get in front. Uh, what about rumor iPhone satellite link? Don't know. It's obviously a rumor. I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, it's a Brax phone from Rob, or is it something Rob does to my phone in a router? Uh, Brax phone is an actual phone model that that I I sell, and um, it's uh, yeah, it's um, it's in the store, and it's very reasonably priced. It's a brand new phone, whereas the Pixels that I de Google are all used, so you obviously uh, get the advantage of a brand new phone with fresh battery and, and so on. Brax 2 phones are great. So um, in, in case you may not know this because you don't have a Brax 2 phone, a the Google phone is invisible to Google. So if you want an invisible phone, you should really have a the Google phone. So do you develop the, the phone or is it rebranded? I am, you know, as you can check from the, the website, uh, I'm on the uh, Lunar OS. The Lunar OS is uh, is the product of the Good Phone Foundation, and the Brax 2 OS is based on Lunar OS, and you'll see me there as uh, uh, an advisor. <coughs> Lunar OS is open source, so the open source uh, devs are the ones working on the actual OS, and um, I don't have to physically be programming it, no. Can I get a link to Rob's store? DM, it's on Braxme, so just sign up on Braxme. We don't ask you for any uh, information to sign up. Just set up a username and password, and you're in. And then the store is on there. And then you can talk to the people. You can talk to the same people you see here. A lot of them are on Brax Me. What do I do for a living? Wow, that's funny. This is what I do for a living. You should ask me what I used to do for a living. So this is what I do for a living. You know, communicate with you and, and uh, tell you about these ideas. 
But uh, in the past, uh, I'm uh, uh, obviously, uh, you know, very experienced in 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 tech technology. I uh, uh, develop uh, large enterprise systems and uh, successful large enterprise systems that uh, you know or companies were made and are still existing and that was I was part of that I developed it I founded some of these companies uh, and uh, yeah so that's what I did for for uh, before I did this and then I left that field and now I'm doing this so if, if you ask what does he know what he's talking about like he knows a lot of stuff well yeah well I do so I developed uh, you know many large enterprise systems that are still being used today okay still being used today I will pray for you are why though I don't know what what uh, your issue is uh, okay, so we're down to one minute. So anyway, guys, so I'm out of time. Um, uh, does saying zucking, yes, it, you, zucking is fine. Nobody questions my zucking, Zuckerberg stuff. So <clears throat> thank you for uh, watching, my friends. And I just want to make you this announcement. I am not going to be doing live streams uh, for a portion of June. So I will not be doing live streams for part of June, likely the first uh, uh, f likely the first two weeks, at least that's the plan right now, probably the first two weeks of June, no live stream, just so you know that. Okay, uh, videos will come out as usual, but no live streams at the beginning of June. Thanks a lot, my friends. Thank you for watching. And... Uh, I'll see you. I will be here next week. So I'll see you next week. And good night. Bye-bye.